for the King is a tabletop RPG with roguelite elements that is published by Curve Digital. You might know them from other games such as Bomber Crew I did more most recently and Flame in the Flood some years ago. And you can tell from the aesthetic that they're kind of behind it. This game in particular is a unique one. It's on Xbox Game Pass. It released on consoles just this past May 2019, but has been on PC uh, since a year before that. The main road like elements are when you die, that is it. You start over and you have the procedural generation with certain aspects and the random loot that you pick up throughout the game. Whether you choose the main For the King adventure or the other modes, you always start with three characters where you choose each class that has different attributes, and these will change over time as you pick up various loot, weapons, and gear, and aesthetically, your character will change. You have an over-hexagonal map at the beginning, and then there's a little explanation of what is going on based on the campaign that you pick. It's not that important. It amounts to telling you where to go, the fog of war is revealed, and you go to those locations and there's various side quests you complete along the way. So more like a, definitely a kind of a choose your own adventure, although there is a linear path. And the gameplay is separated into two parts. The first is the map traversal. This is over land, sea, and air. You go from city to city and there's also dungeons and then you can see the various enemies on the encounters and then on the way top of there, the day and night cycle. Along with that, while time goes on, rather than just being able to grind, the chaos meter, scourge, increase. So you have to keep moving and completing these objectives while at the same time um, deciding which encounters to kind of gain loot through random events. All these events are done through like uh, rolling a dice. But at the cities, you can one location you can do services, you can rest, meditate, and you can also pick up items. The second part is the turn-based RPG combat. So um, after you do like a quick time event, you can go into combat where based on your character's speed and their attributes for uh, attack, this determines, you see in the top there, um, the, the turn order of who attacks first and, and second. Here I'm retreating. The AI here, the enemies, it's more tongue-in-cheek. You have like from your phone, Red Nose Reindeer there, and then the Leprechaun. Um, but if you don't want to dig into what all these things do, it's fairly complicated, you can. It does explain it through an encyclopedia. So the update was this past year, 2018. You have campaigns like For the King, like Dungeon Crawl, except it's Freeform, Frost Adventure, and Into the Deep. The other one is uh, Hildebrand Cellar, which you're seeing here, which is only dungeons, where you're going from one room to the next with a team. And then Gold Rush, which is like campaign, but you're playing for yourself in the first 200 to get to coins and then to get to the vault wins. And these have all been ironed out, so it's all a package deal and how it's being sold now. <laughs> Oh, sound is good. It's in the double-A space and uh, similar in quality like to Bomber Crew, I would say. But you have uh, weapons kind of of the vague period where there's uh, like gun-related weapons like the Arcabousier, it's a blunderbuss, and the, the musket. So they don't exactly make sense, but kind of occupies that space and um, based on the equipment you pick up and there's all kinds of equipment, it changes the sound. Mainly with the weapons and then things like with the bolt, the, the uh, over map, and the sounds that different creatures make. The multiplayer is a little complicated. I'll be doing a separate video on it. For local, it's three player. For online, it's just one, unless you take over two of the slots and then you would pass the controller around. It's still like one person per character, but if there's an open space and only two people join, you can take over the slot if the other person hasn't done it. For the, there's different servers too you can kind of go through, but the main thing with this is the gameplay takes a long time, hours. And if someone quits, so you play with random people, the game drops. So unless you're the host, the game does save. So you want to be playing with people you know. Then you can save the game and go back into it another time. Definitely recommend the game if you're on the fence and wanting to know more about this type of game. Like it definitely checks all those boxes with the like rolling the dice for the random events that you have. The loot that you pick up, pros and cons for the equipment, for like speed damage, you know, like there's a uh, physical damage, magic damage, 
that certain characters are better with and just their, their various attributes that they have too with the, with the items. If you're looking for something quick to play or looking to play online with random people, then I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. You need to be playing with people and that is the best way to experience it, that having each character do their own thing rather than do all three, but you can do it that way too, just to learn the game and you'll still find enjoyment because the experience of getting the equipment over time and just deciding what to do with each character and always that risk of being able to lose. And they have difficulty measures too, if you're, if it get, when it does get too easy. You can change the slider that affects different elements of the game. Like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.